Okay, so living off grid, you have just as many projects as you do on grid, um, but a lot of times your time is taken up by hauling water or cooking or building things. It is all very, um, it's lovely because you're not as distracted by technology, but sometimes it can be very difficult to keep things moving. So I kind of wanted to show you what it really looks like back here. And this is the side that's the most utilitarian of the cabin because we live uh, in an area where you, people might be weird about knowing we were off grid. So we have an oven that we haven't used since we got the Aircrete stove or oven. I have a little bit of tin left over from when we were again putting the rocket stove in. We had um, we just had some little projects, so we have a little container full of uh, metal. We have the ladder. We have our uh, clotheslines that go back and forth because I didn't put up a pretty clothesline. Let's see what else do I have. I don't think that the that the shower is ugly at all. I. John put that tin up when he was here because he wanted a little more privacy where he's a little taller, so I need to take that down. It's not very attractive. But the big thing that needs to come out is the compost pile. This was our first compost pile when we got here last year. It's ugly. I do not like it next to the shower. And it has some pallets in it that we could use to create the pallet um, greenhouse. So I'm going to have the girls take it apart today. We're going to move the pallets over, connect them to the greenhouse, and then we're going to get pitchforks and wheelbarrows and we'll take all the insides of the uh, of the old compost and use them as the new insides for the new one so this is this is what it really looks like it's not always pretty it's not actually trash it is organized but it isn't always gonna look Instagram perfect okay so what's the rule when we have screws that we take out of something um, not to leave them on the ground because last time we had a screw on the ground we don't know what it was got in the truck. And what else? Do we reuse our screws? Do we always reuse yeah. our screws as long as they're straight? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. So, Kaya is going to move the garbage can away so that when the when the pallets fall, they don't knock the garbage can over. The garbage can does not have garbage in it. It just has extra stuff that we couldn't fit in the compost pile when we oh, left for winter. Yes. What, honey? Yes. You're just fine. The cat's fine. The cat is smart. So do you see the fence we had on top to keep critters out? That needs to come off. Put your arms over the middle. Stop. And lift. Yeah. This thing isn't heavy, but it's quite awkward to carry. Yep, so lean it up against the fence where it won't fall on anybody. Pull the bottom out. There you go. Okay, now you can get your Leatherman and you can cut those strings. Or we might actually need those strings later so let's see if we can just untie those strings and use them later. Yep, these ropes are actually still pretty good. So put your Leatherman down and let's have you save the strings because we're going to need them in just a minute. This goes in the garbage. So this is what a compost pile looks like on the inside. We use an awful lot of carbon and the way that the hotbed works is that when you start to put rabbit manure tea into this surface, why is there a can in there? There should not be a can in there. Um, what it does is there's all that carbon, the nitrogen gets into it, the bacteria starts to get into it, and it starts to just break down and sink, so I don't have to turn it. This all would have turned into soil within about six months if we had added the nitrogen and then we, we would have had vegetables growing in the top of it. So this is what we need to move over to the next spot. So it's the second week in April, and this is what I have from the hotbed. And I don't think I would have had as good a result if I had done it just in the greenhouse and not in the hotbed. And I have done this before in a cold frame and had um, results this early. So the, if you don't have a greenhouse, use a cold frame, use a hotbed, use a cold frame on a hotbed, that kind of thing. It's all possible, even in the zone four, where we still have nights that are down in the 20s. It, they need bottom heat as, and just protection. Hi, honey. And so um, this is my third picking just from that small bed. And we have a lot more in there. So 
so pretty exciting so they're doing really good the radishes look really good the onions are thinking about it on this side over here the onions are just fine and then I have the bulb onions in the cold frame in the backyard it's really really nice in here right now the peas are starting to come on the bok choy and the tot soy are doing really well these radishes are not doing as well I think they're just a little too crowded I find what I have found what I find interesting is that the line like the the row system doesn't really seem to work very well um, I'm going to give that to them so they can eat some dirt and eat some greens. Um, because it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter how thinly I put them in, it always comes out too much. Whereas when I broadcast them like this, I get a really good mix. There's enough room for everything. I can come in and pull out my radishes without disturbing my carrots. And then I also have, these look like kohlrabi. That's what those look like. We've had some really good radishes out of here. Even though it's so hot in here. They're doing fine. I haven't had anything bolt that is um, spinach and uh, sorrel. And here I have some Swiss chard coming up. Most of these are sugar snap peas. These are shelling peas right here. The big problem we had in the beginning was with the voles that would climb up here and they didn't eat the plants, they ate the seeds as things started to sprout. And so I had to reseed in here quite a bit. And um, so, which is again why I really, really liked the broadcast system. We didn't have any problems with anything getting eaten in here. When they were in rows, it was like the predictability of them finding one in a row all the way along just meant they came up and ate it every night in big chunks. Over here, the unpredictable nature of them just meant that they didn't seem to really know where to find them. There's a really pretty one. So there's all that. This one, I watered it down the other day, and oh my gosh, all the mushrooms came out to play. Um, I did have my tray of tomatoes out here, and they were doing just fine because of the bottom heat from the bed. And then I put a blanket over the top. But the mice came up in the night and ate the seeds from the tomatoes and my basil. I had basil and peppers and tomatoes in here in a flat and they were just fine but the mice came up and got it. And so you can see where the where the central heat is from the manure and the wood chips and it, it's really really warm and that's I haven't watered it for a couple days but it's really really warm in there so I think I preferred this method, the wood chips and the rabbit manure, to the straw bales. The straw bales was just a lot easier to set up. It was just so fast and so quick. This one I think is going to be way more effective. It's really warm out here in the morning since I watered this. So this hotbed is actually heating the greenhouse at night. So it's not too unpleasant in here right now. It says that it's about 70 degrees, but with that sunlight right on me, that sun is definitely making it feel warmer in here. Um, so it's been really fun. Honestly, guys, I love the fact that it's so big and roomy, but I'm seeing that um, I could have a huge amount of produce in here. And I'm not sure my family could eat it fast enough, honestly. And as the weather starts to get brighter and brighter, I'm going to need to transition from these cold weather plants into warm weather plants in order to keep things from bolting. So as we stop having nights down in the 30s, I'm going to switch from spinach to New Zealand spinach. I'll keep doing the Swiss chard because it's pretty heat resistant. But as far as like radishes and stuff like that, I need to stop that and start bringing in some more intermediate things like maybe pole beans. And eventually once we get past the middle of May, tomatoes and things like that. So that's what we're looking at. I need to come out and water things a little better. It's all just a big experiment and I really, really, really need to get the dirt in on this one so I can put some more greens in. I just haven't got around to it yet. I have all the wood bark and everything, but I'm spending about nine hours in the garden right now and I'm having a hard time finding an extra amount of time to be able to come in and, and finish this one off. I have the, the peat moss all ready to go, but I just, I just haven't done yet. So you can hear the ducklings going at the at the dirt and the greens. He startled them. 
Hi guys. Come on, brave little guy. Come eat your greens. So I'm going to go take care of the rabbits and we'll talk to you later.